Hey there everyone, Stardew Valley, the 1.6 update has finally released and there's a lot of new stuff added to the game. To be honest, it's much more than an update since there's so many new stuff that it feels like a brand new game. The game has been changed and overhauled and today we're gonna just go through the patch notes and see what was added. Be careful, in the patch notes there are spoilers so if you don't want to be spoiled just skip the video, like, but if you want to know more about the patch notes, feel free to stick by since there's a lot new stuff coming in the 1.6 update. So this is a whole change log for the 1.6 update and there are a lot of new features added to the game. We'll be starting off from the top, where you can see that there are new festivals added to the game, which is the Desert Festival, a 3 day event in the spring season which can be accessed after the bus is repaired. So I think for most of the players out there this can be accessed after in your second year, after you fix the bus, since it's a 3 day event only in the spring season. We will also have two mini fishing festivals, Trout Derby and Squid Fest. We don't know anything else about them, which season they will be or where exactly, but they're here. And a new environmental event in summer. I don't know much about this and I really can't wait to see it for myself in my playthrough, but we'll see what it has. There's a mastery system, access via new area which grants powerful perks and items. The new farm type, Meadows Farmland, it has chewy bluegrass that animals love. And you also start with a coop and two chickens. I did my live stream yesterday on this and to be honest, like it's a really amazing farm. There is a lot of added new NPC dialogues, which includes custom GIF reactions, dynamic dialogues which react to things that happened, custom flower dance acceptance dialogues, restored missing dialogue, and like there's a lot more added to the NPC. So when you talk, you'll see more like added dialogues, something new and exciting to be honest. And this is the one option that I love the most and that is, you can now get multiple pets but only after you max out the hearts with your current pet. This is amazing, this is something that I love and I really can't wait to max out Bruno's hearts so I can get even more pets on the farm. Concerned Ape also added a world map for Ginger Island, no more the mini map where you had to just like strain your eyes to see where you are. And the world map shows your actual position within the world in real time, instead of showing you a fixed point, so that's interesting. And in multiplayer also you can see all the players, where they are and everything. Pets that love you will sometimes give you gift. I don't know what this means and I don't know what kind of gift you can get, but I hope they don't hunt some of the chickens on the farm and give us the gift like that, come on. I really hope that's not a possibility. For the NPCs we also have winter outfits. This is something that everyone wanted a long time ago, but it's too bad that it's only in the winter. I would have loved even in fall season, like in the fall season if the outfits changed, so it has that feeling of a like, certain change the seasons and everything. Festivals now have a map and dialogue changes every second year. Except the night market and desert festival, added a golden Jojo parrot, which you can pay to find all the remaining golden walnuts on Ginger Island. So that's what the parrot did on the Ginger Island near the volcano dungeon. You can just pay him to find all the walnuts if you're too lazy to find them yourself. Added perfection waivers, a new Jojo way to bypass perfection challenges, added a prize machine in Louis's house. You can collect prize tickets as a reward for completing quests and special orders. And also you can get those prize tickets from repeated festivals like the Egg Festival and the Ice Festival wins after your first year. So you can use them to get some nice prizes from Louis's house. And this is a really interesting one. A bookseller now comes to town twice a season, above the Georgia Mart shop, and it will sell you books, random books around the season, which can offer you permanent boosts to your skills fishing and like mining and everything. So that's a really nice way to increase your skills over the season. But they can be quite expensive to be honest. There are added also mystery boxes which contain random items which can be quite helpful for you. Added a big tree with a quest line which ultimately gives you some new neighbors. Now this one I really like because 
you can find this big tree next to Marnie's house, like on the left, and you can interact with it with something, but we still don't know with what. I think it's gonna be something like an animal. I speculate that it's gonna be an animal or some magical creature that moves in there and helps you out, but who knows, like. There are four new crops added to the game, carrots, summer squash, broccoli, and powder melon, which can't be purchased at the store, and two new giant crops. For now, because this is like carrots, spring, summer squash, summer, broccoli should be fall, uh, fall and powder melon should be winter, I think, and they give you quite a nice boost of energy, so they can be quite ben beneficial to get. Added four new home renovations, dining room, attic, expanded corner room, and cubby. This is something that I really want to try out, and I just love the attic, like come on. The new items that we're gonna get, and this is a big list, the big chest, the dehydrator, which turns fruit into dried fruit and mushrooms into dried mushrooms, mushroom log, which produces mushrooms and interacts with nearby trees, bait maker, which can produce fish specific baits, heavy furnace, which can process more bars at a time and yield bonus bars, fish smoker, which produces smoked fish, doubling the value of the fish, you get one by default when starting a new Riverlands farm. Text signs, which can be written on, this is gonna be nice. Anvil, which allows you to reroll trinkets. Mini Forge, which acts as a Dwarvish Forge. Statue of Blessings, which grants a random blessing each day. Statue of the Dwarf King, which allows you to select one of two mining buffs for the day. Now like, look at this whole list. Like the fish smoker, the heavy furnace, you can get more bars, you don't have to wait, there's so many quality of life changes here. These two as well are really amazing for when you decide to go mining, like which allows you to select one of two mining buffs, that's gonna be really helpful for any mining run to get some nice items. The tent kits, which allow you to build a tent which can be slept in for one night. This will save you from a lot of fainting which can be quite beneficial when you're doing like long mining runs and everything. Like this is amazing. I just love this. The tent kits I think are the best item. Treasure totems, which spawn a ring of diggable spots. I really want to try this out. Mystic seeds, which grow a unique tree which can be tapped. Mystic syrup, basically the product from the mystic seeds. Deluxe bait, get fish biting faster than regular bait. Challenge bait, which allows you up to three fish to be cut at once, but loses one each time a fish leaves the bubble bar. 19 unique worms of power. So, the deluxe worm bin also, I almost missed it, which upgrades the regular worm bin to produce deluxe bait. So, that's just an upgrade, but this one, this one is gonna be good. Like, this is the, the books that the bookseller will sell and they all grant special perks for your character. Skill books as well, which grant experience in a skill. Book of the Stars, which grants experience in all skills. And Moss, a new resource type which grows on all trees. So you get a lot of book um, changes which like boost your stats. I love that because this will really change the way you play Stardew Valley. You can focus on one skill and just progress with that in the future. So I really, really like the update so far from all of the things that we've like read. We have the mixed flower seeds. I think that's gonna be like the mixed seeds, but only for flowers. The sonar bobber, which shows the fish on your line before you catch it. Okay, I don't know how this would work though. Raisins, which have a special use. Oh, this is gonna be some quest, uh, like quest item or a secret item. And this seed jelly, river jelly, and cave jelly. You this uh, you get this item for fishing, and you can use it to craft the uh, fish smoker, which you can buy a recipe from Willy. This is quite nice and unique, and I just I think that they also like increase your max energy uh, for the day and for seven minutes I think, but it can be quite helpful for like in the spring season. 7 trinkets, which grant powers related to combat. Okay, this is something nice. Red, purple and green fireworks. Star drop tea, which makes an excellent gift for anyone. So, the star drop tea, we guessed it right, that the tea was from the star drops, 
but it's not for using only as a gift 25 new hats okay a line will be drawn at poke there's gonna be a lot of new hats that we will we'll need to try out for sure 280 new furniture oh this is gonna be awesome new unique furniture catalogs which contain themed furniture sets okay so far i've seen one of those and it's the georgia themed set and you can buy it from jo the georgia shop this is quite unique and i love like you have like unique furniture catalogs for a certain theme that you can go for that's really nice 41 new floor styles and 24 new wallpaper styles golden animal crackers that you can feed your animals probably mannequins which can be dressed that's nice for like armor that you like get attached to and don't want to throw it in a chest or something spouse portraits which can be purchased after reaching 14 hearts oh that's interesting but spouse portraits i would have loved if there's a option to have like a portrait of both of us like even if we are married i would love to have a portrait of me and a character that's gonna be quite amazing though but i i don't know if that's possible butterfly powder which allows you to remove pets I don't know who will want to use that, That's a, that should be a forbidden item, come on, no. Bluegrass starter, I knew it, okay, that's for the bluegrass that starts on the meadows farm. Moss soup, okay, new cooking item and secret item, so there's gonna be a lot of secrets though. Oh, a new fish, I added a goby fish, so we have a new fish in the game. I added some new remix bundles, which is good for the community center. You can now place cats on cats and dogs, that's good. You can now upgrade the copper pen into steel, gold, and iridium pads. Oh, nice. But will that increase the... Probably it's gonna get you more rewards. Oh yeah, you can see that in the next one. Like You can now enchant pants with archaeologists, generous, fisher, and reaching. Okay, so you, you can even enchant the pants now, so that's good. Added a special items and powers tab to replace the wallet. The wallet area now tracks a selection of progress markers. So that's where, even on my live stream yesterday, on the wallet area where it was before now there is a progress marker you can also on the left you can see your community center tracker and a lot of other stuff like the how far you've reached into the mines how what your house level is which there's a lot of new stuff though added an animal tab that shows all of your pets and animals that's good you can now build pet balls in robin shop with three variants that's also amazing if you want more pets you can go give, go for it the farmhouse and pet ball can now be moved through Robin's menu. The farm computer can now be used anywhere to see a summary of that location instead of only the farm. Yeah, that's gonna be quite a use for the farm computer now. The mini jukebox can now be used on Ginger Island farm. Nice, I love that. Added a new interaction with your horse. Added a new side tunnel to the quarry mine. Oh, this is gonna be amazing. I can't wait to explore that. Probably that's where we're gonna find the iridium site. I don't know. The community center fish tank now becomes... Okay, okay, this, 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 this. This is the thing that I've wanted for a long, long time. Like, this is something that I've begged for in all of my videos. That I, I wanted that fish tank to have a use. And it finally has. Amazing. Like, come on, I love it. Thank you, Concerned Dave, though, for real, though. Added more secrets and easter eggs. Oh, now, now I'm really happy, like, for this. Like... I'm, I think that I'm most happy for this, like, compared to some of the other stuff, though. Come on. <laughs> There's, like, added two new cats and dogs breeds. Yeah, I've seen this. These are quite nice. Added turtle pets. Oh, this is... I, I want to find this. I really want to find this now. There's eight new achievements on Steam. Four new cabin variants for multiplayer. And a few more accessory options in the character creation. And now there is a machine that I found in Willy Shop, added a new bobber machine with 39 bobber styles to choose from. New styles unlock by catching new kinds of fish. So you can unlock and like edit your bobber style if you want, like that's gonna be quite more interesting. Now this is something I don't understand, like added a cameo appearance to Marvel's 14 heart event. I don't know what that will be, but who knows. Hamily has a new rare social socialized daily quest if you have completed the introduction quest. You can now add anchors, treasure chests, and pearls to fish. Oh, that's that's good. Pierre now sells a few random items at the Winter Star booth at Markup. 
Added the jingling sound when running with the cinder clown shoes on. Okay, that's nice attention to detail. Like, baby toss now has a chance to create. What? Why would you toss the baby? I'll have to try it on my main farm. Like for real, if that's true. <laughs> Added the skull cavern statue that can be used to tow hard mode in the skull cave after completing key challenge. Okay, this is good. Added additional chest to skull cavern levels 200 and 300. Added unique Skull Cavern chest appearance for level 100, 200, and 300. Added a high node block, so that's gonna be probably be a, some nice secrets as well. Added Iridium Golem to Wilderness Farm. So, also, that's mostly like all of the new content and features that we're getting. Like, that's a lot. Like, basically, it's a whole new game. A whole new freaking game and not even an update. And now we're just going to go for the visual improvement because there's a lot of visual improvements as well. There are added waterfalls now around the valley. Added more holiday decorations in winter. Added more pet stones to various maps. Added jackal lanterns after the Starry Valley Fair in fall. Seasonal world map variants, this is really nice. Added a new rare ambient creature. I guess it's the raccoon. Added some rare summer butterfly. I had an uncommon little brown bird variant. Redrew the world map. And yes, this is really amazing. When I saw it now in the game, I just loved it. Both journey textures are now seasonal and reflect the latest valley map. Good. The bus stop has now has a wider map. Jelly, pickles, wines and juices are now colored based on the ingredient item. Nice. So we don't need any more mods for that. Many town trees are now actual tree objects that you, though you can't cut them down. Nah, too bad. I wanted to deforest the whole town, like come on. Slight adjustment to the way items pop out of when dug from the ground. Hmm, that's interesting. Updated Volcano Gold or Node Sprite. Some trees have a chance to lose their leaves in the fall. River banks and lake shores in the mountain, town and forest area are now less jagged in some places. Ooh, nice. Graphical improvements. Yeah, I've noticed that. There's a huge rug now in Pierre shop. Improve the art of George and Evelyn's roof. Okay. If you destroy a mine's chest, it now shows some graphic debris. Ooh, a mine's chest. You can destroy those? Added special backplates to fortune teller TV. And lighting changes. It now gets dark an hour earlier in the winter. Night tiles now activate an hour earlier in all season. Ooh, that's interesting. Night lighting in non farmhouse is now slightly darker. Okay, that's interesting though. There's so many light changes as well. Added light sources to window, dark but lit windows, intro bus drive cutscene. Like, there's so many stuff though. But they're like mostly visual improvements that don't change the game but much, but still add more to the game. Like, come on. There's multiplayer changes. You can now have up to eight players on PC. Many improvements for multiplayer performance and stability. Steam players will now use Steam multiplayer authentication, potentially improving connection issues. Issues. So that's like good. You now need the same build number to join a multiplayer servers. Accepting a key challenge that increases mine difficulty now only kicks other players out of the affected mine type, not all mines. Okay, that's good though. <laughs> Purple shorts no longer show a chat message when placed into the Luau soup. Okay. <laughs> so those were the few changes for the multiplayer changes. Next up, we have the balance changes. Added a box with three tent kits to the Ginger Island jungle. So that's, that's where we're gonna get those tent kits. Come on, we need those. Weapons found in the wild now have a chance to come with a basic innate achieve enchantment. You can reroll innate enchantments. Add the forge using a dragon tooth. Okay, so now... Weapons will have enchantments, which is good. You're gonna get easier access like to fight the mine monsters and everything. Like slime hatches are now significantly smaller. Okay, that's good, but they're still I really want an option to edit those that come on. Farm animals now gain a little happiness if you close the animal door behind them at night. Okay, that's good, but who watched that? Like, come on! They can close them, uh, close the door themselves. Like, come on, we can, we need to teach them. Grass now survives in winter, though it won't spread. However, cutting grass during winter is much less effective. 
Okay, that's good. The mushroom cave now comes with a free dehydrator. Okay, so one of the items that we need will get with the mushroom cave instantly, where we can dehydrate the mushrooms or the fruit, depending on which cave you choose. So that's a nice thing. I think that this will, uh, you can also buy the recipe for this from Pierre shop for 10,000 gold. You can get it day one even, like, that's a nice thing. Change the recipe skill requirements for charcoal kiln. Foraging from four. Oh, so the recipes got a change as well. Charcoal kiln got foraging four to level two. Cookout kit from foraging level nine to three. Survival burger foraging level two to eight. Okay. Tapper from T3 to four. And worm bin from eight to four. For price changes, most home renovation now costs money, which is refunded if you undo the renovation. Reduce fairy dust sale price from 500 to 300. Reduce tea sapling sale price from 500 to 250. So the tea saplings got a nerf. Reduce the life elixir sale price from 500 to 220. Again, building cabins no longer requires materials, only the 100 gold price. Raise price of second house upgrade five, ooh, from 50,000 to 65,000 but reduce the number of hardwood needed for, to 100. Reduced worm beans hardwood needed to 15. Increases Increased cost of warp totem, farming casino. Oh, okay, so also another nerf. Raised price of bombs in dwarf shop. Okay, that shouldn't have been done, come on. Raised some hat prices. Okay, inflation came for the hat mouse as well, come on. Here's he's raising prices again as well, like come on. <laughs> shop changes, put limits on some casino stock and you can now buy all brazier recipes in Robin shop at once instead of... Oh yeah, I've noticed this yesterday. Item, dro item drop changes, chopping down a fruit tree now yields the appropriate fruit sapling if the tree is mature, okay. Chopping down a tea bush now gives back a tea sapling, good. There's now a small chance to find a cosmetic item and other goodies while doing random tasks. Okay, that's nice. Snake vertebrae are now easier to get. Okay, that's... Thank you for that. Train cards, which carry wood, can now drop hardwood. Santa's train car can now drop gifts. Reduce prismatic shard drop rate from iridium nodes from 4 to 3.5%. Rare yellow slimes now drop money, <laughs> okay, oh, that's what we're gonna be farming. Brown slimes now drop wood. Botanist perk now applies to items dropped from trees, okay. Reduce chance of fishing void mayo at the witch's swamp. Gift taste changes, adjusted gift taste for several NPCs, okay, so we need to be careful for that. Treasure chests are now universally like gift ex except by Linus. Skill XP changes. Mushroom logs and mushroom boxes now grant 5 foraging XP. Harvesting berry bushes now grant 1. Harvesting foraging from wild seeds now give much less foraging experience, but grant some farming experience. Okay, this is good, since you already, already planned those. Monsters on the farm now give combat experience. Okay, there's so many. Extended the area of effect of downward phasing melee attacks. Topaz ring now gives plus one defense rather than the unused precision stat. The Topaz ring now gets uh, like a return in Stardew Valley. Ooh, some weapons got some bu like buffs, buff ups as well. Bombs now affect terrain features like trees and crops within the round explosion radius rather than a square area. Adjust the Junimo. Let Grace jumps in Junimo cart when you're. <gasps> okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. You can still jump for a short time. Your score is now saved if the minigame forcibly exits while playing endless mode. Noxus gas emitting mushrooms no longer appear in pairs. Finally! <laughs> I suffered for nothing. Nox. Those mushrooms were the worst ever. Like, come on. But I defeated the Junimo cart, so. I don't care about this anymore, like, come on! And this bubble spawn rate on whale level. Oh, another thing that I'm really mostly excited about. <laughs> uh, let's see, adjusted machines, worm bins now need a lower fishing level and produce more bait, nice. Loom ha now has a higher chance of double cloth. Fish ponds now have a chance to produce extra row when they produce row. And geode crushers no longer require coal to operate. 
that's in good. That's good. Adjusts penalties when kno knocked unconscious. You can no longer lose the golden sight, infinity weapons, or tools. We can no longer lose more than three items. The amount of money lost now scales to how much you have. It's now less punishing if you don't have much money, but more punishing if you. Oh. Okay, this is this is gonna be more like you have to be careful. Georgia Cola now gives you a very short speed buff. That's something interesting, and Greedy now gives plus zero five speed. Mine and dungeon changes as well. Added Coal Notes to the Volcano Dungeon. Oh, Coal Notes. That's good. Barrels now spawn on Skull Cavern levels divisible by five. Reduce the maximum possible effect on bad luck can have on finding prismatic slime. And reduce number of bugs to get the monster sale goal. Okay, that's like good. Bundle changes for the remixed bundles that we read above. Riverfish bundle now gives deluxe bait and improve some community center rewards. Oh, okay, so the speed grow now requires 5 moss instead of 1 clam. The lock speed grow now requires four bone fragments instead of one coal, and quality fertilizer now requires four sap instead of two. That's interesting. Spouses, oh, spouse changes. Spouses now have a seven-day honeymoon period after marriage, which prevents them from laying in bed all day due to being upset. Okay, that's interesting. And kissing your spouse and giving them a gift on a previous day each reduces the minimum heart level threshold for a bedridden day by one heart. Okay, that's interesting. I love that. Rebalance the crop fairy event. Uh, the chance no longer depends on number of planted crops. It can no longer happen on the last day of the season. Okay, this is good. Increase the shaving enchantment effect on giant crops. Ooh, that's interesting. The mushroom cave now provides mushrooms every second day. It was changed to daily in Stardew Valley 1.5. So we get a nerf on the mushroom cave, sadly. You can no longer plant trees in the beach farm tunnel. Randomization no longer produces simple repeating patterns in many cases. Clay farming, mushroom level prediction. Oh, that's interesting. Spreading weeds can no longer destroy artifact spots. Increase the number of monsters that daily monster quests will ask you to slay in some cases. Till dirt on the island farm now decays in the same way as the regular farm. Slightly increases time you have to push against farm animals before passing through them. That's gonna be quite a nice thing. Daily quarry output now increases each year up to a limit. You can no longer plant trees in town. Why? That really helped like make the town feel more interesting. Secret notes are no longer created during festivals. And adjusted fish variety in ice fishing festival. We're gonna spitfire the quality of life changes because there's a lot of them. Like, from the quality life changes, you get performance improvements. NPCs now shove chests out of their way instead of destroying them, so you don't lose items. If Pam won't be coming to the bus for any reason, she now leaves a sign informing you and you can drive yourself to the desert. <laughs> How do we have a driver's license? Come on. Audio changes. Made more sounds positional. Positional sounds now fade with distance. Soften the bomb fuse sound. The music now ducks out. You can now strafe while charging a watering can or hoe. You can now refill slingshot ammo by right clicking with the same ammo. Planting cactus seeds on the farm now fails with a message instead of the seeds dying overnight. Holding a tea sapling or seed over a garden pot now shows the green red placement tile. You can no longer pick up rugs if there's something on it. Okay, this is amazing. Checking a pet bowl will now show a text bubble with the pet's name. Added a new post fishing sparkling text to indicate we've been cuffed something for the first time. Torches can now be placed on sprinklers. <laughs> you can now sit in chairs during festivals. You can now move filled chests by hitting them twice with a heavy tool. You can now place flooring under underneath most buildings. Crystallariums now have to remove have to re be removed and replaced before a different gem can be put inside. Daily billboard quests now have a more informative tracker and notification when you make progress on them. Added a small checkmark icon on special orders you've completed before. You can now skip the pet adoption scene which causes you to adopt the pet. Reduces the amount of time you need to push against a pet before they start shaking and then let you pass through them. 
reduced time for mini obelisk warp. Male farmers are no longer forced into wedding clothes on their wedding day, so you can now choose your own outfit for the wedding. Emptying a fish pond with fish still in it will cause the remaining fish to flop out of the pond. You can now change flooring in the sl uh, slime hatch, you can now remove the starter incubator and slime balls no longer appear on crafted flooring. So that's for the slime hatch changes, but nothing for the look. UI improvements, however, there's a lot. Added, a, a, an, added an hourglass cursor shown when you're waiting for something to load on title screen. No, notification messages, sound in the night events now show an icon on the screen to indicate that the sound is playing. The achievement menu now lists all potential achievements. Hidden achievements you haven't unlocked yet are question marks. Okay. So when I went through all the quality of life achievements after this, like there's more only for the sounds and things like that. There's nothing more for the gameplay mostly, but you can also check them out for yourself, I think. But for the other changes, there's like some things, but nothing much. Like pen no longer yields the same thing if you pen in the same spot twice a day. Like some things that were fixed for the better. Like there's really, really a lot of interesting things added. And I just love the game, to be honest. But I think that I'm going to be ending the video here. Like... Everything else you can check out for yourself. I will leave, leave a link to this change log in the description below so you can check it out. But for me, I think the 1.6 update is not a small update. That's a whole brand new game and experience. And I really can't wait to play the farm. So for now, I'm going off. I'm going to play the new farm and enjoy the game a lot. And I will see you all in my next one. But till then, stay safe.